Hello, my name is Patrick Hartnett. I'm the developer of Qualitivity, the new plugin with Studio. This is Getting Started 03. We're going to discuss uh, creating a Qualitivity project and translating one file. From that one file, the data that we've recovered, we're going to have a quick look at the reports and to understand how we read the information from those reports. A very high level overview. For now, later we will discuss uh, more detail in the reports and more detail on how we're going to be uh, tracking what information while we're editing. Okay, So let's get started. Um, in the previous video we videos we talked about uh, setting up your trial license and, and setting up the settings. We set up uh, some uh, a new client, we set up a, a language rate, we, we looked at the quality metrics for that client incidentally we uh, set up some default uh, um, a default language rate, a default uh, hourly rate um, and we assigned uh, a default quality metric. Okay, we just click save. Now let's set up a new qualitivity project. So for that, we click on this item here. It pops up a nice window, so we can associate a studio project. There are I have only four studio projects here, and it has to be associated to one of those. So you have a direct link with the new the qualitivity projects here to the studio projects. You have to select one of these, and you can't have more than one uh, connection to a studio project, basically. So uh, let's it's already inherited the description here. So as you kind of select them, it'll inherit all the properties, obviously. Let's uh, set up using this one. We can associate the, the client that we've set up and click OK. From here, you it's doing nothing more than that. It's just setting up uh, an item and holder, a placeholder, where you can associate all of your project activities. We don't have any project activities yet because we haven't worked on any documents. We haven't gathered any information uh, that can be saved there. So let's have a look at uh, a project. We set up something for this one. We open up a file for translation. And maybe we open up a different file. I think I've been already using that one. You can ignore that for now. Uh, second sample. Or maybe let's set up something here. Okay. I'm not going to do any real translating for. <laughs> this video. I think I've kind of made some amendments here. Same. Okay, we just kind of walk through some just say updated by Patrick. I'll just delete that, okay. Um, and that's it. So I'm going to click uh, Instantly, you can see now that the tracking has been active for for these amount of seconds. We don't have anything in the quality metrics anymore. We we talked that about talked about that in a separate video. So whether I click uh, close the document or stop tracking is going to activate uh, this uh, uh, project activity dialog where you get uh, an opportunity just to to save uh, the settings. So I'm just going to close it for now. I'm not going to save the information. Well, maybe I should. I guess save the information. This is the project activity uh, dialog. Uh, you have the details uh, tab where it allows, where you can see now what project it's associated with and how and what client is inherit is uh, directly associated with that project. The client uh, obviously has some presets, some settings that we've set up in the initially uh, associating the uh, quality metrics, the hourly rate, the language rate, etc. Okay, we can choose uh, either the same name of the document. Or we can give it a different name, which makes more sense to us for the project activity, a description, the status, yes, confirmed, if it's billable or not, and then the hierarchy, uh, starting and ending date. This may mm, kind of uh, change slightly uh, depending on, on how many documents eventually, because we will be able to merge many documents later on. We'll talk about this in a different video. Um, so let's have a look at the activity rates. We've seen that the activity rates 
is automatically uh, inserting the standard euro rate. We, this is doing this because we chose, if you can remember from the settings earlier, for this client, the Avengers, we have we want for every new project activity uh, to automatically check uh, this item here, so that it's uh, automated in a way, and we don't have to do it all the time. Obviously, you can change that from the settings again. You can go back and deselect that so that it's not automatically set up uh, when you create a new activity. For the hourly rate, um, we decided it was 60, and uh, it's one. So these are decimal uh, hours, basically. And let's just have a quick uh, kind of uh, debug testing all of these things while I'm creating this video. So I'll see to create to understand what a decimal hour is. Basically, you take the elapsed time. And you can change just to whatever you want it, you know, it's just, just automatically doing this for you. So this is 1.0 to 1 minute and 2 seconds, so that's 62 seconds. So we have 62 seconds, and then we divide it by 60, I guess, and divide it by 60 again, and we should get uh, z 0 0.017. Okay. Perfect, okay, so that's exactly what it should be. Um, so for its and this is what it's saying is uh, 0 0.017 of an hour, which basically this is hourly rates. You're going to be paid uh, 60 uh, euros, euros, which is amounting to one, one euro, a little over one euro. Okay. Um, you can also set up uh, a custom rate. So you say, well, that's no good for me. I say I have a minimum rate of. 35 euros, otherwise I don't get out of bed. Okay. Um, then we have the comparison settings and uh, the quality assessment settings that we talked about earlier. Okay. We don't have any quality metrics in there yet, but uh, you would be able to govern, manage these from, from this uh, project activity area. It's nothing more than a container that's uh, that manages all the settings for the activities for the documents that you've been uh, working on. So I'm going to click save. I'm happy with these settings now. And that will create uh, one record here. So we go back to our quality view and let's have a quick look at the reports that are created from that. So now the activity is stopped. Basically, it's not tracking anymore because we closed down. We didn't stop the activity, the, the tracking. We basically closed down the document, the only document, uh, and it stopped the uh, tracking for us. Okay, so we have the activity records uh, report, which is giving you a high level uh, sort of representation of how that, uh, that data from the project activity, project activity is represented and can be distributed to your client so that they have a, uh, an idea of what they should be paying you, I guess. So we have the activity name, uh, the status of that, the start and stop the date, um, and then the the remuneration data that you will be invoicing them, obviously. You have uh, an idea of more detail when you expand this item here. It's also possible to have more than one, we'll kind of have a look at that as well, more than one uh, project activity in this report, and then you will have uh, in sequence, you will have all of the items and there'll be all the uh, accumulated uh, prices and totals here. If you want to look at the individual activities, the details, well, then you can see exactly what's in there. Well, exactly in, a, in an overview, uh, the rates that were applied, we applied, remember, a minimum rate of 35 euros. So it gives uh, you kind of a very good overview of uh, the information that you're uh, summarizing here. Then we have uh, the activity documents if you want to have a b I don't know why it's doing this it's kind of uh, I think it's sort of because of this video it's kind of formatting it in a strange way but for the activity documents you can have a good overview again overview of uh, what changes were applied at a segment level this is the transaction modifications area so it gives you an idea of 
When you opened up the document initially, there were 19 segments. Out of those 19 segments, there were 10 new. Nine were already automated uh, machine translations. This modified area is basically what we did. So we made three, uh, we modified three segments. We uh, edited uh, two of those automated translations and we uh, basically added a new translation. So let's have a quick look at uh, to see if, uh, what those were. So this has a strike through, a red strike through the automated translation, meaning that this was an, an one of those initial automated translations that we edited. Uh, we edited we edited it at this uh, time, and it was segment number three. It uh, had a, and it is now the status draft. It was the status draft before, and it's now the status draft. Otherwise, you would have a symbol indicating again if it's uh, a strike through, it's something that changed, and then uh, an underlined ye uh, yellow uh, background if it's something that changed too. Okay, we'll also have a look at that later on. Uh, you got 20 words. The source, the target. It's very kind of uh, restricted the area in this video for looking at this because I uh, wanted to make it smaller. But the representation, the presentation of this on your computer should be a little bit, uh, a little bit better, a little bit more readable. You have the updated target, and then you have the track changes. Basically, this is the integrated functionality from Studio. I'm just recovering it automatically because the information is embedded into yes, into the SLX zip file. It's uh, a nice um, idea of uh, the changes as you're applying them. So in this case, I removed uh, this word and I added uh, these uh, these words to the segment. With the track changes, you have a very complementary sort of overview on the in-context changes. So this is a flat in-context uh, comparison. I think both of them complement each other. So with the track changes, you understand exactly what changed on, on, a, on a cellular level. So the words and the characters, and this gives you an overview of how that fits into the context. Then you have the uh, other segments, uh, the other two segments that we've modified. In here we have the modifications, it's the Demiru Levenstein edit modification uh, distance, then we have the PM, the post edit modifications analysis, and how that fits into the post edit modifications analysis uh, structure here. Uh, you remember that we set up the language rates and for the traditional Tradus uh, categories, the um, analysis bands, which are analysis band, if you're not familiar, is one of these, so within this uh, range, 95 to 99, uh, this is one analysis band. Uh, this is another one, 85 to 94, and, th and these basically, if the, w the weight of changes that uh, uh, were applied to transform one segment into another uh, is um, is equal to to this percentage, will then I will uh, associate that change into one of these categories. And associating to what that change into one of those categories, I'm automatically associating the language rate for that category, if you remember from the from the language rate. And so this allows me to calculate uh, uh, an eventual price that helps you um, uh, calculate the cost of production for that uh, translation for that file. Okay, that's a very kind of a, uh, I know it's a we will talk, we'll discuss this uh, in a little bit more detail later on. This, um, in this report also you have the the actual project activity uh, uh, time, so the elapsed time, the, the time you open the document to the time you close it. The elapsed time instantly may actually be different depending on if you're working multiple documents, um, because the uh, uh, the active time in each document will be calculated. Uh, but we'll discuss that. I don't want to complicate things yet. Okay. Then we have the document records, gives you a little bit more information and especially with relation to the keystrokes. So for every single record, well, you let's expand that a bit so you can actually see it better. For every single, um, this formatting is a little bit strange. Let's uh, I'll keep an eye on that. So every change we made, we were tracking the keystrokes and you can see here quite clearly, uh, well, there was really very little we did, but you can see for that little amount of uh, work we did is tracking an awful lot of uh, additional information. These um, we'll talk about, and so you can see here we've, you know, okay, we didn't recover any translations. I was going to try and give you a demonstration of how when we pull in a, a machine translation or, or a translation from a transition translation memory, well then it'll also tell us from which memory it came from, but we'll also take a look at that. 
uh, some other time. So you can see here for every single segment we entered it at this time, we uh, exited the segment at that time, the total amount of time that elapsed while we were in the segment is equal to this. Um, it's uh, again similar information we had in the overview, uh, what we changed, the source target, but additionally you have um, uh, a little bit more information. You can also choose to look at this information, choose not to look at some information. So if you want to unclutter it or, or <laughs> maybe clutter it with more detail, you choose. Okay, it'll become a lot more relevant this uh, dial this uh, area. The more complicated the reports become with the overview, um, when you start merging information, when you kind of visit the same segment more than once, well then it becomes very kind of useful having this uh, report here. Or if you've got multiple documents uh, inside in one project activity, well then you'll have a list of the files there and uh, the time uh, structured by the time in which you edited them. Um, and it'll become a lot more useful, this dialogue, to kind of uh, pinpoint exactly what you changed when and how that was merged and how that is reflected in the overview. Okay, then we have the document reports uh, area where we have some nice uh, Microsoft charts that represents the data in different ways. The time you, in this case, the time you spent average time you spent, the mean median on each segment, uh, the amount of the wor words per minute. Um, uh, I've got a very high, very impressed, 81 words per minute. Uh, percentile report uh, that again calculates the average uh, using the the average using the mean and also the median you can calculate here. Uh, they're uh, identical. And then we have the quality metrics which we haven't uh, uh, done yet with this document. Okay, so that's it. Uh, I think the next time we'll talk a little bit more detail about the language rates and how we how that fits in in here. Uh, okay, so let's uh, that's it for now.